Okay, moving on now. Let's take the next listener phone call. Hi, this is Ken. I'm calling for Dr. Kaku, listening on GCN. I'd like to ask um, about um, the nature of uh, music, um, in particular the mathematics um, behind um, music. For example, um, if an alien were to listen to a song that a human had wrote and found appealing, would he not feel the same, you know, like um, appeal towards that music based on the fact that uh, it's oftentimes, um, you know, controlled by the Fibonacci sequence or the golden ratio? Um, in terms of compositions. So if I even were to find a song interesting, wouldn't, a, um, uh, wouldn't an alien uh, look at this way, in this way that galaxies and the skies uh, follow the same spiral structure as, like, for example, a Nautilus show? Thank you for your time. Well, it's hard to say what an alien aesthetics would be like, but we can say something about the different species on the planet Earth and also the nature of music itself. It turns out that 2,000 years ago, the Greeks, uh, Pythagoras, <clears throat> worked out the mathematics of music. That's right, 2,000 years ago. And he did it by looking at a lyre string. If you take a look at a lyre string or a guitar string, you realize that the two ends of the string are fixed, meaning that only certain vibrations are allowed. You can have integer or half-integer modes on a violin string, but not anything in between. And so by plucking a string, the uh, ancient Greeks were able to work out the mathematics of music, thirds, fifths, octaves, and they even created a philosophy around music. And they thought that perhaps music was the paradigm by which we could understand the universe. Now today, of course, we have biologists who study the animal kingdom. And where do we find music in the animal kingdom? Well, crickets crick and birds chirp. But why? Well, crickets crick because they're looking for mates and scientists have been able to analyze the physics of bird tweets and they find a regularity and a pattern very interesting they find first of all birds which tweet in a very healthy resonant way attract more females because they are advertising the fact that they are healthy they are free of parasites and by simply listening to their tweets you can hear that they are healthier than normal. Second, the complexity of the music. It turns out that birds which had more complex musical notes had the most mates. And so here we have an evolutionary reason to perfect music. Music advertises the fact that you are healthy, you are free of parasites, that you can that you can uh, digest complex mem uh, complex notes and patterns of music, advertising the fact that you are fit and healthy and ready to mate. Now let's take a look at humans. If you are Martian coming down to the Earth, you'd see that every society has music. So you'd say to yourself, "Aha." Being a Martian, looking at Earthlings for the first time, because all Earthlings like music, you'd say there must be a gene, a music gene. Just like birds have a music gene, just like crickets have a music gene, there must be a genetic basis to it. And of course, if you look at songs, and you were to run songs through a computer, the computer would say, impartially speaking, that almost all songs are about love. Almost all songs are about human emotions attached to love between, uh, between two individuals. And, of course, that again involves evolution. That you want to advertise the fact that you are available, that you are healthy, that you are ready to mate. And, of course, these are the attributes of someone who's trying to ha take an evolutionary head start by finding a mate. And so we think that on Earth, almost all the higher animals have some form of communication which resembles some form of music. Even though we may not recognize it as music, the other animals do. In the terms of chirping and in terms of tweeting, Animals have this characteristic, and therefore in outer space. Aliens may also have this, because aliens probably evolve from lower forms, and if so, then they may also like music. 
But, of course, it's hard to say for sure because no one, of course, has ever bumped into an alien. By the way, one question I often get is when we do bump into aliens from out of space, what are they going to look like? Well, take a look at humans. What do humans have that help to propel us into becoming the dominant species on the planet Earth? Well, first of all, we have eyesight, the eyesight of a predator, because predators are smarter than prey. We talk about dumb bunnies and sly foxes. Because if you are a predator, you have to understand the characteristics of the prey. We have an opposable thumb to manipulate the environment, and we have a language. That are the three basic characteristics that propelled us to become intelligent. And I think intelligent life in outer space must also have these three characteristics. Well, unfortunately, our time is up for Science Fantastic.